Welcome to Ask GMBN anything, anything at all. Clues in the name, you ask us questions about mountain biking and we try and answer it. We get those questions in the comment section down below the video, so get ready to put your questions there for next week. Also on the hashtag AskGMBN and on email ask at gmbn.com. Right, let's get into the first question this week and it is from Colton Hogan and he says he's stuck between a downhill bike or an enduro bike. Um, he's thinking of racing downhill racing next season in Australia but the riding locally to him does suit enduro. He wants to ride a lot and he's a bit worried is a downhill bike going to be too much out on the trails? Well you know what Colton a downhill bike anywhere other than going down a hill probably is too much they're pretty big beasts a lot of travel quite a lot of weight for climbing up hills it's not going to suit it very well so unless you're strictly racing downhill bike i wouldn't do much else with it if i was you i think an enduro bike sounds really good it's difficult not knowing your trails but an enduro bike you can do so much on these days you can take those bikes to mega bike parks and ride any trail even the more serious black runs and diamond runs or whatever runs they're going to have at these crazy parks these days the difficult stuff an enduro bike is going to handle so i would say maybe give that a go uh, if you start really enjoying the downhill and you're not enjoying the uphill maybe it's time to move over to a downhill bike then hope that helps right next question is from cam parko do i need do i need tickets to go to an event like the uci downhill world cup in cairns um, typically at these big international events you do need tickets um, you can usually buy them on their websites uh, the event websites uh, cairns i don't think the tickets are released yet but i know fort william world cup which is coming up very soon which i'm going to that is a ticketed event i think it's to do with obviously making a bit of money for the event and also actually knowing how many people are there and they don't go over um, capacity for the amount of people watching the event so yes tickets required Right, Stefan Esterhughes, he says, when going downhill, how much would you use your front brake in, front brake in relation to your back brake when approaching a corner? Now, it's difficult to say because every corner is different, every track's different, uh, different descent, steepness. Um, the front brake is gonna give you an awful lot more stopping power. Sounds crazy, you've got all of your weight on the front end, so it's got a lot more grip to a certain point. Obviously, when you lose your front, uh, front end grip with front braking, it goes very, very quickly. Rear end braking, you can use it to correct the bike's position coming into the corner, line yourself up differently, scrub off speed, of course. But if you really want to get great braking, then you're going to find it's all in the front end. Lots of grip just there. Um, Oliver Richards asks, uh, can I convert my free buy to a two buy um, taking the big chain ring off and swapping it to a bash guard. Well, Oliver, you can, you can do that. And originally that's what happened. Most mountain bikes were three by chain rings um, and people started taking off either the big ring because they were never using that huge gear um, or the smaller ring because they were just powerful enough not to need it. And it was saving them a bit of weight. But it wouldn't be a true two by. Um, a two by in the setup these days is very popular. It's a great choice for a mountain bike. Um, but the ratios have been really worked out. So you're getting all of the gears you need just using those two chain rings up front and uh, 10 or 11 cassette at the back there. So you could do it. It might save a bit of weight. It might suit your riding. If you're not using that big ring, then you could take it off. But it wouldn't be a true two by. Now, if you did convert to a two by, you're probably going to be asking yourself one by or two by. Well, to help you with that question, why don't you take a look at this video where we talk just about that? The last few years have seen the emergence of one by drivetrains. Many riders have ditched their front mech and now rely on just one single chain ring and a wide ratio cassette. But there is still room for that two by drivetrain. In this video, we're going to take a look at one by versus two by. Right, back into the questions. Now, Wesley Minion asks, Martin, a few episodes back, you stated you were vegan. Have you been a vegan your whole life? Or was it something you did after your injury? Um, now, my injury, which was like uh, three or four years ago, something like that. Um, I was vegan before that, actually. Um, and it's something I think has been really helpful in my recovery. I really love it. I enjoy it. I get a lot of stick about it in the shed here. Quite often, what I often asked what I had for breakfast. Today, I actually had Marmite on toast. It was very nice. 
great vegan breakfast uh, with a meaty taste, might I add. It's the meatiest thing I eat, Marmite. Right, uh, Mystique wants to know, actually it's Mystic, but I've changed his name to Mystique because it sounds like something from X-Men. It might be something from X-Men. Mystique? Keep going, mine. Do glasses really make a big difference for riding? Uh, Mystic seen it's a nice pair in the local bike shop, bit expensive, um, are they worth it? Yes, short answer, they are. You're not gonna get watery eyes when you're going down the trail really fast. There's different polarizations and colors to work in different um, terrains, whether you're in forests or in bright sunlight, they really make a big difference. I didn't think they would until I tried them. I never cross country ride without glasses on now, so definitely give them a go. Philip Crocker asks, how can I protect my chain stay on my cross country bike when the gear cable runs without an outer cable on the underside of his chain stay? Okay, so the usual way to protect your stay, chain stay would be to wrap some bar tape around it. That'd be a really simple way of doing it. You can get chain stay guards. Um, but if you've got, uh, like uh, Philip, you've got a cable running on the underside of your chain stay and it's actually only got outer cable for a part of it. Um, so there's actual cable exposed. Wrapping that bar tape around is actually gonna constrict the cable and you're not gonna get as good a shifting on it. So what I would suggest if you really wanna do it is actually take off your uh, cable on your derailleur and actually put an outer cable right across that final part until you get to your derailleur. Then you can simply zip tie it onto your chainstay and wrap that in bar tape. So then everything will be nice and protected. That would be my suggestion. Next question is from I'm Paraf and he, she asks, <laughs> is it okay to drink soda, um, i.e. Coca-Cola or Pepsi or similar while riding? Uh, those drinks have got lots of sugar in them and sugar equals energy, right? Well, yes, it does. Um, but they're also full of pop and bubbles, so you've got to be careful. Cross-country riders actually and pro roadies quite often use uh, Coca-Cola or Pepsi as their final drink on a ride because uh, it gives them that great big punch of energy right at the finish um, but it's always had the old fizz shook out of it because that is no use to you it's going to blow you up and you're going to feel absolutely dreadful so yes you can use them got to be careful because they are full of sugar um, so you be looking after your teeth but get the bubbles out because you won't enjoy it um, and if it's helpful why don't we throw to how to recover during a ride which should have some bits in that could be useful take a look Everybody has their own idea about the best method of recovery and what to do. Some people might just like sitting on the sofa with their legs up watching their favourite GMBN videos. While sitting around and drinking a protein shake does do something towards recovery, actually active recovery can be really effective to maximise your training. Alfie Miles asks, he's 12 years old and he wants to know which is the quickest way to ride berms when he really wants to gain some speed. Well, the great thing about berms is they've got an awful lot of energy packed in them, right? If you ride them at the right angle or the right line, you're gonna gain speed, but you really need to whip out of them. So you've got to judge the line. Usually a berm to get ultimate speed out of it needs to be practiced. But once you've ridden lots of berms, you do start to notice as you're coming into one, whether you want to get a really high line, whether you really want to cut short, or whether you want to really rail around the outside at the top. It really depends on the berm, on the length of it, the tightness of the corner, the descent into it. Lots of uh, different reasons why it would be quick and help you gain speed. But one thing you can definitely do is gain speed in a berm. So, takes a lot of practice getting to know them getting experience but you're 12 years old Alfie you've got time get out there and I bet you're going to start getting some amazing speed out of those berms right next question is from Philippe Trullo and he's worried about getting a carbon bike he regularly rides in Chile his 90% hard rock the bikes that he ride are constantly getting hit and chipped can a carbon bike stand up to it well I would say it can it can. I mean, they're amazingly strong, these bikes. Um, you can add protection to them. There's all sorts of guards you can put on carbon bikes. You can do really simple things by putting cut off tires, tires on the down tube to protect it from hits. But these bikes are really, really tough and they almost certainly can handle anything you can throw at them in terms of terrain. Uh, the problems with a bike like carbon uh, material come when you start landing jumps out of line and you start cracking them because you've overstressed them. Once a crack comes on a carbon frame, then you are gonna have some troubles. But they're amazing bikes. 
they're worth trying. Carbon makes such a difference on certain builds, so it's worth checking out. Right, next one is from Don Sadoltz, and he says, guys, I have a full face helmet, but no other proper gear. What should I get first? Well, that's a good question. Uh, what do you think, Alex? What should you get next? Knee pads. Knee pads. Alex is saying knees. Yeah, knee pads, I'd go with that. Nice set of knee pads. They're gonna give you loads of protection, make you feel really, really confident. Quite often you can get these ones that's leading down below the knee, but also protecting your shin. So that's definitely worth um, trying out. Gloves, gloves is a good one. Um, if you haven't got those, that's a good second buy after your full face helmet. But good to hear you're thinking about getting padded up because it makes you feel so much more confident. Next question is from Gunlauga Stari Gilferson. Good name. Uh, what are your post-workout habits? <laughs> do you do some stretches after every ride or just hit the pub? Well, it's the latter for me, Alex. Yeah, stretching. Stretches, yeah, Alex is always stretching after a ride. Um, it's a good idea to stretch after a ride though. It makes you feel really good. Um, gets rid of all of the strains after the ride. Um, but I would, quickly stretch and then go to the pub. Just my personal opinion. Other riders use different methods and it is fine. Okay, WB says, any, on, any advice on how to make sure my feet stay flat on the pedals during jumps or rough terrain? Well, feet placement is what it's all about. If your foot is moving around and you've not got a co confident contact point on that pedal, then you're always gonna feel a little bit uncertain. So it's getting really used to sitting right on the ball of your foot um, or the position that really feels comfortable to you um, and being consistent with it. And to help with that, why don't we take a quick look at this video where Neil teaches us all about foot placement in his Mission Control series. Today, we're looking at foot placement on the pedals. It's the quick fire round. We're childish. Right, next question in the quick fire round is Keto Judson. How big of jumps and drops can I do on my Trek Marlin 5XC hardtail? Um, well, be careful. Only as big as you can handle as a rider yourself. Um, if you land it smoothly, then you're probably all right. You land it bad, you're gonna regret it. Hugh Wiley says, my dropper post seems to slam upward really quickly. Ooh, dangerous. Uh, compared to the ones on your videos. Um, is this okay? Well, it could need fixing. It's worth checking out. It might be the difference between using an air system and a hydraulic one. Uh, but yeah, worth getting it checked out. Why are bikes not made of fiberglass? Because that would be ugly. That would be gross. More MTB, that's a crazy question. Martin De Grief says, what is behind your computers when you guys are presenting? Um, I'm running a couple of videos whilst I get bored in between the questions and a tiny script. Right, um, Ron, Ron Gear Rob says, is it a requirement that somebody has a beard or facial hair in the Dirt Shed Show at all times? Yes, between me, Blake and Neil, one of us must have hair. If for some reason any of us should come in freshly shaven like I have today, although I've got a slightly red nose from the sun in the garden, um, Alex brings a beard on his face for us every single time. Thanks, Alex. No right, um, Seth Reichert says, would you recommend goggles with an open face or are sunglasses, are sunglasses just fine? No, goggles all the way with a full face helmet. Sunglasses and a full face, it'll work. It's not gonna look good. It's not gonna look good. Callum B, can I put a 650B wheel on my 29er frame? Uh, likely you can. Um, might run a bit weird in geometry. What you could try is running a 650 plus. So you've got a bigger tire, takes it up to 29, but obviously you've got to see if you've got the tire clearance in your frame. Some 29ers, you can do it, and it gives you a really different ride, but the geometry is still working. Uh, next question from JC Kutzi. Um, Does DH riders use clips or fats? Um, me and my friends are arguing about it. Well, hey, don't argue. Um, you're both right. Downhill riders use clips and flats. Depends on the course and the rider. Isaac Jeinstrand, I'm buying a new bike, show off. Uh, can, I use a, can I use a hardtail for downhill? Yes, hardtails go downhill, you definitely can. You're gonna be able to go faster on a full suspension bike, likely, 
on a uh, full suspension bike on downhill, but hardtail can do it and it can be a lot of fun too. It gets pretty bumpy. Um, Mick Sutherland says, how do I get my mates to ride more um, and would you rather ride alone or in a group? Uh, personally, I like riding in a group. It's a lot of fun. One way to get your mates to ride um, actually is get a, a cafe en route or a pub en route and say, let's ride to that and back and then work out a nice trail on your way to it. Um, because everyone likes going out for a drink or a cake. That's what I found out. That's a good way of doing it. And that is this week's quick fire round. I've written a song and it's called, correct me if I'm wrong. That's the end of the song. It's very short. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right, this week it's Javier and he wants to know how to shred harder. It's a simple question. So let's take a look and see what he's doing and what we can improve. Um, here he comes down a little windy trail. Swoop, swoop. Okay, okay, I think I've got a good idea. You can see from that trail, Javier, that there's lots of um, swooping corners. And then you come into a little section where you've got a few little whoops. Now, what you're not doing is standing up really nice and straight on your bike. You look very relaxed, but you're not using those corners. Now, if you come into it a bit quicker and start getting a little bit of energy out of those corners, vroom, 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 and then pumping those whoops, then you're going to gain some more speed. And then you would be shredding harder. And that is you corrected. You weren't wrong, but now you're strong. That's pretty good, wasn't it? It kind of rhymed. No. Thanks for watching this week's Ask GMBN Anything At All. Send us your questions in the comment section down below. Use the hashtag Ask GMBN or you can email us ask at gmbn.com and we will try and answer your questions next week. Um, if you've really enjoyed watching this video, then why don't you watch another one of our GMBN videos? You can click here to see our power hour where Neil and Blake got as much as they could out of some trails in one single hour. It's a good video, that. Um, and over here, you can click on a really cool video where you can see Neil and Blake having a manual challenge. Who's the winner? We'll find out just there. Click on the globe to subscribe, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up like. See you next time.